First of all, I, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, today, I'm going to be presenting uh, a collection of building blocks that I have created over the years to do consulting work using Wolfram technology. What I do mostly is uh, data analysis systems. And if I were to say that the thing that maybe distinguishes me the most, uh, the Wolfram side of things, is that I use a lot of the GUI uh, functions to create applications, OK? So that's what I'm going to be basically emphasizing today. OK, so the Wolfram language is great, right? We all love it. Uh, However, I learned to say from Marco Tanchek, who is back there, that shift enter is too much for many people. Okay, uh, shift enter is like, uh, do you really want for me to do that? Uh, it's like too much. So, many people out there uh, would be willing to use Wolfram technology, the benefits of it, but you know, but asking them to start coding is like too much for many, many people out there. M maybe not for any one of us, but for most people out there is really a, a headache. Um, however, Wolfram language provide, provides beautiful functions and really useful functions for creating GUIs. And they're not being used that, that much, I would say. And I do use them a lot. And um, by the way, before I forget, if you go, if you go to Mark's presentation at near 4 p.m. Uh, on, on Data Modeler, uh, some of the work he's going to be presenting there which is also based on GUI technology for Wolfram, uh, is, is performed by, by me, um, we together. Anyhow, um, so Stephen mentioned yesterday that Wolfram Alpha is there for automating data analysis. I mean, he didn't mean exactly that, but the thing is that doing things that way, first of all, is way too expensive for most companies, okay? For the Fortune companies, no, but for the companies that support the Fortune companies, it's too much, okay? And there are thousands out there that can, honestly, they cannot afford uh, Wolfram Alpha uh, uh, solutions. Um, not only that, Wolfram Alpha is like a general system where you can do some analysis. And by the way, I, I worked for two years as a subcontractor with Wolfram Solutions. So, and I happen to work with uh, uh, the technology behind Wolfram Alpha, so I understand a little bit how it's done. And uh, the thing is, it's a sort of a general system that if you really want to go deep on the details, you, on the analysis you want to do, maybe Wolfram Alpha, you could tell, is, is not exactly what you want. Um, anyhow, so none of these ideas intends to be like final uh, uh, proposition, but it's like just ideas, right? Um, the idea is that um, I'm going to be presenting, presenting these building blocks I've created and which are mostly for data analysis. Working with data, uh, I've been there like 14 years as a consultant, and Many times I would find that the quality of the data that the customers have is really, really poor. And, right, <laughs> I see faces here. So what's the problem with that? That you do a job and at the end, they're gonna blame you because they don't have quality information, okay? So I decided to create one of the main applications I have developed so far, which is a database editor based on Mathematica. And what is that for? Uh, we won't have time to show you. And by the way, there's nothing after this presentation here. So if you have time, I can be here for one hour after <laughs> the presentation showing you the applications I've created, but we won't have time to, to show you. Uh, I won't have time to show you everything I've done and not nearly close to the things I've done. So by the way, my presentation initially is gonna be like slides, okay? And at the end, just to make sure that I say everything I have to say, at the end, I'm, we're gonna be demonstrating uh, applications. Okay, so this application for um, database technology is intended to be used for different people at different levels. Uh, for example, if you are just a data entry, the application is set up for use 
to um, enter data all day. So I have customers who are basically all day typing data in this application that, that you will see. And why creating it? Because with this tool, I can improve a lot the quality of data because I can set lots of traps to make sure that the users won't make mis stupid mistakes, okay? For example, a common mistake when the data is really poor is to find a character or a letter where there should be a number, okay? And if you use simple data entry tools like a spreadsheet, that could happen and no one will know and you've seen it. So uh, using these tools, that won't happen again. So data types are well classified and if you try to save a, a letter where there is a number, it will tell you, no, oh, please make sure that you fill that. If you try to sell a null record where it should be filled, uh, no, it's, it's not gonna allow you to make many of the common mistakes that people do. Okay, in, in data entry. So once you have quality data, um, many times you don't have the depth in the analysis that you need to make decisions in, in your organization. So what I do is I help organizations to create, or I do create applications for organizations to help them deep into their data to make analysis, okay? And we will be able to take a look at some of that. Um, and then, uh, if something, I mean, I, I will create your application to do analysis, but what if you end up doing the same analysis over and over day, day after day? So maybe that could be converted into a report that you just click a button or so and you get a report created for you, okay? So the idea is to standardize uh, data analysis operations such that your data um, has more value because lots of companies have lots of data, but at the time of making a decision, Okay, could you do the analysis for me? And then, yes, I'll do it, but it'll take me two days and then the decision needs to be done this afternoon. So you don't, you don't have information. You have data, but you don't have information. So the world from technology is uh, a good place to get started to solve that problem. Okay, the database editor. Okay, what I am gonna do here, uh, let's see. This is a screenshot, sorry. Let me um, just highlight a few things here. Um, this is a screenshot of the database editor showing that many data types can be edited with this editor, okay? Uh, the first one is text, Arial, okay? It is telling you it's a new value. Let me point with the point, this you can see. So I hope you can see. Here I type Arial and it's telling you, hey, this value is new in the database. It had not been there before. Anyhow, then I'm going to, I'm picking a quantity here and then sales quantity. I can, there's a, as soon as you start typing, if it's text or something like that, it'll like a web browser, it will start showing you options so that you make less mistakes and you are faster in your data entry process. Uh, I've also created a, a date editor or date menu where you can pick dates or, or days. You're not gonna make mistakes, it's always gonna be a formal date, okay? And you're gonna be able to see the calendar if needed, okay, to select the date. And with a single click, you select a timestamp like right away, right now, right? And uh, so you can also uh, edit graphics, graphics 3D, images, images and images 3D, uh, binary, and even sound. So many sort of data types that you have in Mathematica, you, you can edit with it with this and um, create real applications with it, okay? And um, <laughs> time flies. Okay, so just to show you, for example, here is a screenshot of a slide where I am showing the database editor used for image processing. In this case, I am taking a shopper. This company was interested in uh, analyzing shoppers. So I, I created a software for them that you click, single click the shopper, you import it as a, an image, 
single click it and then it breaks into pieces and then you can save all the pieces and start saving information for uh, doing further analysis for offering cl to clients and so forth. So uh, as you can see, uh, where up here is the database editor, okay? So it's a Mathematica function that can be used as, as a subcomponent of, of a bigger GUI, okay? It is a GUI by itself, but can also be used inside another GUI, okay? That's the way it has been designed. Okay, so here's the GUI, and here are some additional items uh, down there. Okay, so I'm working with this. I mean, I took the image, I broke it into the parts, and then here I'm selecting this particular one, which is in yellow. It's ready for you to take a look at it, and then it go with a click goes into the database, and then you fill the other blanks and you save it. Okay, so there's somehow a manual process. It's I mean there. Are, uh, this is a dirty job. I mean, to work with data, many times you have to do the process manually. Someone has to be the slave there and not be that well paid, but do that such an important work. Anyhow, the idea is that uh, th this is one single application of the database editor. And then uh, here is another application. This is for no another company. And for example, here I am, uh, I created a, an application where you, for example, here you type the, the ID, the, the employee that's, that was responsible for some manufacturing processes, okay? There's the date, the shift, the machine, the part number, and all of that information. Uh, at the bottom you have the, a, like a report of the latest records you have been typing, okay? And then, uh, by the way, here you see a top view here, right? Top view, so here I am, or the customer in this case, is capable of editing two tables at the same time, or n tables, 10 tables. So sometimes tables are related, so when you're doing data entry, you wanna make sure that once you make this entry here, this part of it goes to the next table, and then you fill, fill the other part. So that's all taken uh, into consideration here. Okay, but well, as I said, it's too much. Uh, here's another application, OEE Raider. Uh, overall equipment effectiveness is a statistic that is really important in manufacturing facilities. So in this case, uh, what you see at the left is an instance of the database editor where uh, there are, I mean, this is a real time process that as a machine is, in this case, packaging things. You would see shifts in the process of what you see there, like green, yellow, orange, and so forth, are different states of a machine that is continuously packing um, uh, packing products. And, uh, and uh, some of that information goes, again, into the database editor. So in this case, a, the database editor is being fed by a manufacturing process in real time by the help of a human being. Uh, it's not perfectly, I mean, this is for human intervention, all of them. Anyhow, wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, best viewpoints. Well, it's an old application I created for uh, doing data analysis. A beautiful application. You can do many, many things with it. And just as an example here, when you upload a data set, you can pick from a menu uh, which is the field that you're going to analyze and which are the fields that you're going to be grouping by. Okay. And then in this case, for example, we made analysis of a particular variable that was sales and you pick the group by variables and you can select which of the item categories from each of the uh, a group by variables are selected or kept into an, the analysis. And at the end, you have this hierarchical analysis like, okay, so these are the sales, say, by country, by department, by product, top five for each of them, something like that. It's really nice, works really nice. So, however, uh, I need help from more from to sell it more. Anyhow, the idea is that once you use it, at some point, if you say, hey, this is the analysis that we need for this company. So there's a way to capture the state of the application and, and have like a script that you can feed and every single day get the same analysis done with that script. So that will help you um, to define the analysis that eventually will be automated in some other processes. Okay. Okay, so this is a data analysis application. So this is a block number two. Block number one was the database editor. This is block number two. And checking time here. Um, this may look simple, but it is not. 
these are palettes for our clients. Now, why these palettes are special? Um, well, first of all, it's important to provide a palette to the customer such that, I mean, open the palette, just click on the button, and then get your application ready. That's important. Now, why these palettes are a bit different? Because of, mostly because of the two options down there. At the bottom of each of them, you have two options. Uh, and um, the one at the left is stupid, but it's important, is the background color of the application. So I used to have a single background, and some people hate it, and some people loved it. So now you can, before you open the application, you can tell what the background is going to look like, and then you work. If it's going to be gray, it's gray. If it's going to be something else, you pick it. So great. Background, not that important, but still, it's important to keep the client happy, right? Otherwise, they're going to kill you. Second, check for updates. That's the most important one, particularly because of the way it's implemented. Uh, uh, I mean, you all, you all know that we work hitting and uh, chasing bugs all the time, right? So when the client discovers a bug and the application is implemented in 20 machines, what do you do? Okay, are you going to go one at a time? I mean, they're going to hate you. So what I've done is that with that check for updates, since I always work with data in databases, the files, the update files are sent to a database. With the update, you go to the database, you bring the files, everything gets updated like this. Okay, I from my home, I bring in the new bits from their desk. Everyone with a single click, they they get their application updated. That's really important to get things working in real life. Okay, so once. Uh, those three build, I mean, these are the main building blocks I use for creating applications. Uh, once those three building blocks are ready, I start creating what I call a radar system, which is a reliable and accurate data analysis and reporting system, okay? So it's gonna be an application where you just get in there with a few clicks, you get your analysis done, okay? And these applications are usually uh, used at different levels in the organization. You, you will see, I mean, let me say it this way. Um, so let me go to a better screenshot here. Well, more or less. Okay, with this application, I tried to hide everything I could. Uh, so you will see some things that like don't belong to the application, and I do have permission to show this from the customer. Um, with this application, you will see that there are different tabs. So depending on your interest or your level at the organization, you will pick the tab that is better for you. Okay, so uh, with this application, when you get in there, the, what, what you see there, okay, is a summary of the current uh, year of a production plant for different products. And once you get in there, you click on the radar bottom at the left top corner here, and that report is generated instantly, okay? Not instantly, it takes a couple of seconds. It could take 30 seconds or so because it's lots of analysis down there. But anyhow, the idea is that uh, once you get in there, a single click will give you lots of information that you didn't know. So the general manager of this company loves me. He wants to marry me. <laughs> no, he's really, really happy with this work because he, he, was, he, he would tell me, I was blind. I couldn't see anything. And now I see what's going on in my facilities. And so uh, uh, for example, from here, you can select uh, the, the time span where you want your analysis performed and whether you want to do your analysis on a monthly basis, weekly basis, daily basis, the sort of analysis you want to generate, uh, the clients you want to take a look at, maybe you want only some of them or some of the products only. And then uh, there are, these are the basic options. There are advanced options like uh, for you know, simple things to make the plug look better. And for example, uh, 
Here, uh, the products are hidden on purpose. You can, uh, where? Here is a control for making this plot uh, lo longer so everything is going to be seen. But I, on purpose, uh, wanted to hide all the poor products for this presentation. But there are all the products at the right. So you can click on any of them at the right. There, those are buttons. This here at the right are buttons. So you can click on any of them. And you will get a report, a more detailed report for each of those products. Okay. So maybe none of you works at manufacturing. But the idea is you, you, you can. I wanted to show you some ideas of what you can do with the world from technology in terms of graphical user interfaces. You have data. I mean, shift enter and then next page and another cell is too much sometimes, right? Working with something like this is way much simpler and many people are going to be able to adapt the technology in the organization and just use it, right? And buy more. So Stephen was asking for help. I want to help. Uh, if I, I'm sure there are more from people here. I want to help, but I need your help. I need uh, to work together to make this available to people. I think that maybe, I think that there's a huge space that Wolfram is not taking advantage of, something like this, okay? I'm a one-man show with a, I have one guy who is helping me and my wife supports me. <laughs> and I've done lots of things, one-man show. I'm sure that there are many, many, many things that we can do. I live in Puerto Rico. I mean, as you know, after the hurricane, there's nothing but trees on the floor. So, and still I'm making money. So there's great opportunities in big economies. Uh, I hope that I, I could get some attention. Anyhow, um, so the main idea I wanted to bring, and, and after I finish this, I'm going to do some demonstrations, OK, if you have time. But the main idea I wanted to bring is I'm ready to help you creating applications with the Wolfram language. And they are great. They're really useful. Uh, they can be really beautiful. But if you're not ready for that, I can help you also get ready for that by training on your organization on how to create GUIs. Uh, I participated on the Wolfram trainings, but I think that none of them is that, uh, well, let's say that I can complement Wolfram trainings uh, going deeper into data analysis and graphical user interface generation. Anyhow, so this is a formal presentation. Now, I'm going to, uh, before I close, I'm going to make some demonstrations. Uh, are there any questions? No means. No. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I. I think that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's lots of pace to. to I mean, to do other things with the world from technology. Uh, OK, so any other comments or questions? What, what are your, your main competitors? Like when you, when you enter a, uh, one of these companies, what are they mostly using for this framework? Uh, well, that's, uh, well, first of all, I don't have a broad view because I'm not, uh, I mean, I can only address small and medium companies. So I cannot see exactly what's going on at the higher levels. However, for, you take, for example, Crystal Reports is one of the applications they use. I mean, it, it is far away from the things I do, honestly, honestly. I, I do, and I can tell because of the reaction of my clients. They're really happy. However, Crystal Reports, just to mention one, they sell really, really well. I mean, they do selling really well. So. And by the way, uh, they, let me tell you this example. I created one of the systems that I, the one that I showed, just showed, I created to this client after he decided to quit on a 200,000 project on a software that they bought that they realized was not going to help them. OK? So I mean, uh, honestly, I don't know well the competition. But I know well that what I am presenting here is great for almost any organization 
that manages data, that nowadays is every single organization has data. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at, um, so this is an application this, that is about to be, <laughs> Roy knows about this, it's about to be uh, delivered. I'm working on it almost as I, as I speak, uh, most probably in this month. Um, this is a palette for them. Uh, this is a laboratory that takes care of primates in the University of Puerto Rico. And um, so I've created data entry applications for them and also a radar application for them to do analysis. Okay, so let, let me allow you to participate. I can show you the database editor or a radar application. Who votes? Radar, okay, great, great, okay. The other radar was, is more powerful, I would say. But anyhow, the idea is the same. Um, and this one, well, let, let me say, um, by the way, this is like a local test, as you can see in the palette. This is running on my computer. This is not, this is old data, so it's not actualized, anyhow. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, in some instances, um, I do something like what you see here. I pre-compute many things for the GUI to operate really fast, okay? If I don't do this, uh, the GUI is gonna be really slow. So the first part of the GUI, I'm telling the user, hey, this is gonna be performed only once, please give me a <laughs> second, okay? And um, now things are pre-computed for you, for the application, so that things run much faster, okay? And still, that may come up again. Uh, so here, in this um, application, uh, you can select from standard reports. There are some reports here, uh, and there are other reports. So you, depending on which type of the parent sort of report you select, then there are some child reports. And just to mention this, um, the first one you have here, let me pick one animal, which happens to have meaningful information, that's 0, 0, 5. B. So, zero, zero. The, here, uh, as you can see, um, uh, this is how it works. You start typing, it starts suggesting you, hey, do you really want? So, you should not make mistakes. And by the way, you are not going to be able to, to select an animal that doesn't exist. Okay, so that's the animal you want to analyze. And the radar, you always have to go to radar to, to tell the application, I'm done. Okay, so you were done, and here is the simple report. Okay, these are, this is some information about that animal. Uh, this is the animal, the sex, the species, and so forth. Uh, here is some virology information. This is like a report, right? Um, th there's, here are some weights. Okay, so this is the history of weights for that animal in, in time. And at the end, you have like a confidence interval, uh, whether the animal is doing well or not. And by the way, it seems to be a little bit uh, skinny. Um, so here is a record of the vaccines, vac vaccines for that animal. And, um, okay, and uh, reproduction, no offspring recorded for that animal, and so forth. So, but this is really, really uh, a, a, a basic, um, I mean, these were the characteristics for the animal, and I think, that, well, if you go to, to the pathology information for that animal, then you get other information. Please note that this is a system that is about to get started, so I don't have much meaningful information here, but you see the scheme, right, how it works. So, so here you have some clinical information history, virology history, I don't have much, microscopic finding, and I wanted to show you this, okay? The system saves images, and these are images taken from the Wolfram language, I guess. Uh, these are not real images, but the thing is, you can, uh, I, I could, if you are interested after I finish, because I think I should be finishing now. Yeah, I should be finishing. But if you have time, I can show you how to type in the images and how to, uh, you know, uh, how to use the editor to, to save images in the database, uh, along with the description, like the date or whatever, comes along with it. So, and just to finish, uh, if you select, what, uh, let's see, 
the production reports. Let's see. Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, OK, this one is also evaluated only once per session. It's doing some pre-computations. Uh, so the idea is you select from this menu uh, what sort of, um, uh, what does this mean? Uh, how many animals? This is reproduction, so this is a female, has had, uh, um, uh, no, there are 21, uh, let's see, I'm lost here in my report. Uh, oh, they, this is the corral, I don't know how to pronounce that in English, the cor well, the animals are located in the corral. And so, and this is, um, this animal has had one offspring and so forth, so all of them have only one. Anyhow, that's the idea. And you can see the data behind this plot, I guess. Uh, reproduction data. Uh, OK, so that's it. I'm done. Um, so uh, usually, ah, I cannot get done. There are so many things. Uh, one of them is that you can export PDFs or XLS files. If you have data that you want to export somewhere, you can do that. Uh, or whenever you do some, exp um, let's take a look. At, let's, let's see if this can export as an Excel file, XLS. And hopefully there are no bugs. This is a huge application. Open the exported file. I'm going to say yes. And here is the exported data. So, uh, so I mean, Wolfram is too much for many people. So you have to be able to take the data away, bring it in, and take it out. So. Uh, that's my basic presentation. I can share more. We have space. I think that no one is going to use this meeting, this room now. So I can show more things. But if you have any questions or any comments, I do have business cards somewhere around here. So if you're interested, please uh, let me know. Thank you.